Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome everyone to the Islamic Courses Zoom session titled uh, Metaphysical Dimensions of Muslim Environmental Consciousness. And we're very honored and privileged to have our dear Ustad and Professor Ibrahim Ozdima, um, who is the author of The Ethical Dimensions of Human Attitude towards nature. Uh, who, he's, a prof he's an environmentalist as well as a professor of philosophy, ecology uh, and religion, the founding president uh, of Hassan uh, Kalyanuk uh, University in Turkey. Uh, just a reminder for everyone, for security reasons, please display your full name on the devices on an entry. Uh, you have been muted on entry. This is being recorded. Uh, so if you're not already registered, just leave your email address on the chat and we'll send you a copy of the link. There is a Q&A session. So what's going to happen, the professor will be presenting for the next, um, so let's say about half an hour, 40 minutes or so, and they will have another half an hour or so uh, for Q&A. Uh, just a reminder, please, 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 uh, please put your um, uh, devices on mute. Okay, so just allowing a few more people. It's a full house. We've got nearly a couple of hundred people registered, but we can only allow a hundred. So uh, those who are first, first come, first serve. Uh, let me just final people in. Okay, so just to remind you for everyone, um, like with most social injustice issues, you know, uh, the left or Marxists generally dominate and dominate the environmental question. Whilst many Muslims, rightly so, should get involved and be concerned from a faith perspective, how do we construct a hermeneutical and epistemological uh, approach within our own Islamic morals and metaphysical dimensions remains the challenge. Um, a, there's a lot of Muslim interest in the environment, which is fantastic. But as I said, a lot of Muslims who do get involved, it's dominated by, they get involved with the left or the Marxists. And there's nothing wrong with that, but we have to, as people who are believing and to reference the Quran and the Sunnah and the traditions of Islam, we have to take that uh, from our perspective. Now, in, in his book, the professor says, the ethical dimensions of human attitude towards nature uh, he, he critically assesses the historical perspectives on nature from uh, Western philosophy and science and examines relevant uh, ethical theories uh, and finally discusses contemporary metaphysical basis for environmental ethics from Muslim tradition. Um, very important, he argues, there's a direct and strong relationship between environmental problems uh, and our understanding of nature and our relationships with natural objects depends on how we understand and conceptualize the natural world. So I'm not going to say too much about the actual presentation. The professor will kindly uh, talk about that. But just to let you know, Professor Ibrahim Ozdima is an environmentalist and a professor of philosophy and ecology and the founding uh, president of Hassan Kunio University it's in Gaziantep, Turkey. He's visiting professor of philosophy at the Abu uh, Academy University in Turku, Finland. Um, I'll put his full bio, but I think without further ado, um, it's important that we start the presentation or so. So I'll hand it over to our dear Ustad and Professor, uh, Professor Ibrahim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Wa salatu wa salam ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum from Istanbul. Uh, thank you very much uh, for giving me floor and this opportunity to talk to my colleagues, my friends, my sisters, my brothers in UK and also in other parts of the world, because through this webinar, anybody who interested, they can uh, listen to us, they can jo join us, and they, they can ask questions to us. Yesterday, I was in Kashmir, the other day I was in, in, in Jakarta, today I'm in London. Thank you for hosting me. And, you know, uh, today in, in, in the Muslim environmentalism, we are now uh, entering a new uh, stage, a new dimension. When uh, in, the, in, the, in the early stage, when you, when you talk about the environment, everybody understands cleaning the trees, cleaning the rivers, cleaning seasides, just putting uh, you know, uh, things uh, to, 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 to the beans. So, but what all about environment? What is the environment? What is the metaphysical dimension of environment? What is the meaning of universe? As the Quran says, Kelm. What is the meaning of human being? 
what is our relation with the, with the, with the universe and with the nature. Then I will uh, try to clarify the meaning of nature, which is not fixed in the Quranic context, but for the practical reasons we are using it. I will present my talk uh, through a presentation. I hope you enjoy it. If you have any questions, please write on your, your, your questions. Then I will try my best to answer your questions. Okay. You know, I started as uh, my, 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 my colleague started, uh, I started, the old Muslim, we start uh, praising Allah. Here's a manuscript which is uh, given me as a present. It is just published in Turkey. It's a new, uh, uh, you know, of a manuscript. Uh, you know, it, it starts, it is named the Ajayb al-Mahluqat wa Gharayb al-Mawjudat. Marvels of creatures and the strange things existing by Zakaria Qazwini from 13th century. It starts, Alhamdulillah, lazi ansha'a ajayib al-mahluqat. You see, who prays to be who created marvelous creatures in the nature. From the start of an Islamic book, you see, he prays Allah, and he's, he's, he's aware of the marvel, uh, beautiful, uh, uh, beautiful things in nature, and he connects it with the creative power of Allah. This is the gist of this talk today. Immediately, there's metaphysics. In this presentation, therefore, I will outline the basic of Islamic metaphysics and link it to the Islamic environmental ethics. To understand deeply why Islam has been such a kind of environmental insight and, et and ethics, the understanding of metaphysics of Islam is essential. And especially, especially in the time of the pandemic, or the impact of all lifestyles, the impact of consumption patterns, or use of water, or use of land, has a direct impact on, on environment. You see, in this, in, in this coronavirus environmental impact just give us very good lessons. In China, you see, before it is January 1st, we call that January 20, the first weeks of January, then in February, you can see how we have less pollution over China. It's all is because of impact of human action on, 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 on nature. Lot of problems, growth and hunger, international migration, international and domestic terror, human rights violations, human trafficking, and even nihilism. So, in, during the, the COVID-19, uh, COVID the global pandemic, let's think about us, about nature, about the universe. Why? Because Muslim awareness matters. The Muslim pop population of the world is estimated around 1.6 billion, the largest religion in the world after Christianity. According to a study, the number of Muslims is expected to increase by 70% from 1.6 billion to in, 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 in 2015 to nearly 3 billion in 2060. Islamic values and culture influence how Muslims see and treat the world around them. So if we have a positive perception of Islam, if we perceive or if we base all relation with the universe on the teachings of Islam, you see, it will affect what we eat and drink, what the work and the, the, uh, when they work and have children and when, where they live and travel and or even when they select a particular course of education and pastime. Therefore, we believe that Muslims have something quite unique to offer in resolving dilemmas now we force as, a, uh, as humanity. So let me, you know, just, uh, you know, uh, summarize why, uh, what is metaphysics? The word metaphysics comes from the Greek, uh, two Greek words that together literally mean after or behind or among the study of the natural. Metaphysics studies questions related, but 
this is uh, literal meaning, but in the philosophical sense, metaphysical studies questions relate to what is what it is for something to exist, what type of existence there are. See, what it is for something to exist, what types of existence there are. So it is the branch of philosophy that ex examines the fundamental nature of reality. What is reality? What is the nature of reality? The relationship between mind and matter, between substance and attribute, between potentiality and actuality, behind the order of things in universe, there exists something playing the role as the unseen provider of the norm of the universe. From the birth of the philosophy today, all intelligent, great philosophers, they believe there is something, some unseen power. But when they try to, what is this power? They have different views. And this is why we have history of philosophy. But Islam, this is why, you know, Aristotle, uh, Aristotle and definition of, definition of metaphysics as the study of being as such, and that is the nature of being or what, is, what it is for a thing to be or exist. El, uh, first Muslim philosopher, Al-Kindi, the goal of metaphysics is the knowledge of God. It does not make a clear distinction between philosophy and theology. He believes they are both concerned with the same subject, and this is unique to him. So, when, what do you mean by environment? The word derived from the French word environ, which means surrounding. It's everything that makes up our surroundings and affects our ability to live on the earth. So, how we understand the surroundings? Uh, average Muslim, Muslim who practice daily prayers almost 40 times repeats Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. The first verses of the Surah Al-Fatiha. What it means to be, to, 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 to praise the sustainer of all the worlds. Sustainer. This is very, very important for the Muslim environmentalists. So the sustainer of all worlds, that is all environments, are all sustainer. Uh, who embraces and encompasses all environments. You see, from the first verse, verse of the Quran, it connects us with the, who is behind all this physical universe, who is unseen. This is why Quran says, who they believe the unseen in Ghaib. But why? It is not blind, uh, blind belief, you know. We believe there is something behind the physical universe on the basis of this arguments presented us by Allah in this world. Let's see. You see, what is the sustainer of all worlds means, you know? The sustainer, the sustainer of all worlds, that is all environments. The Quran expresses, uh, expresses this truth as follows. وَلِلَّهِ مَشْرِقِ وَالْمَغْرِقِ فَأَيْنَ مَا تَوَلُّوا فَثَمَّ بَتْشُ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهُ وَاسِعُ الْعَلِمِ To God belong the east and the west. Whichever direction you turn, you face, there is the presence of Allah. As a Muslim environmentalist, I understand this verse, just, you know, my environment. It is not only physical dimension. This is, here it is metaphysical dimension too. Who is behind this? See, wherever, you know, to God belong the east and west, it means all directions, whichever direction you turn, you face, there is the presence of Allah. And for all, for Allah is all embracing and all knowing. So you are not alone. You may be alone at home. Everybody will be outside, maybe uh, uh, went for what? But if you look at yourself with the Quranic lenses with the lens of just put just put this verse in your eyes. Look. Whichever direction you turn, your face there is the presence of Allah. How through creation, through His art, through His 
bond is uh, to, to us. I will give you more examples about that. And then Quran presents us a separate the, the environment. We should not forget that the sustainer, the Lord, the owner of all environments at the same time is our creator. Heavens, the planets, the stars, the, the galaxies, the earth, oceans, seas, lakes, rivers, lofty mountains, forests, all living creatures, all living creatures. That is all natural phenomena. That's all natural phenomena created and sustained by Allah constitute our environment. Yesterday, I was giving a lecture to uh, Islamic University of Science and Technology in Kashmir. I said, just put this glass, this lens in your eyes, just look at the lofty mountains of Kashmir and just feel the presence of Allah, the sustainer, the creator. Believe me, it was just everybody, everybody was speechless because we sometimes we forget because of a couple of reasons to look at nature, to look at ourselves, to look at universe with the Quranic lenses. Thus, then we say environment, we understand all these natural phenomena as a whole. Moreover, we can add to the natural environment or social environment. The later include poverty, homelessness, migration problems, racism, abandoned children, drug abuse, alcohol addiction, neighbors, and other problems. So, let me just remind you a saying of the prophet regarding our very social environment. He reminded his friends, he is not a believer whose stomach is filled while the neighbor to his side goes hungry. He also, I think, is the first human being who reminds his community regarding the neighbor's right of wind. Yes, the right of wind. When saying, when building a house, you must not prevent your neighbor to have wind. Just remember the hot climate of Mecca and Medina. How important this to respect, to first to understand the ecology, the climate, the impact of climate on you and on your neighbor. Then when making a house, respect your neighbor's right to, of wind. In short, the Prophet Muhammad as a mercy for all creation, urged kind and considerate treatment and relationship towards all neighbors, which is our very social environment, and all creatures. They deserve all respect and good treatment, regardless of their religion, race, or color. He doesn't say your Muslim neighbor. He says your neighbor. Because when you neglect your neighbor, whatever his or her, her religion is, then the problem starts to grow. And again, in the Surah of Fatiha, we say, all praise be to God, the sustainer of all the worlds. You alone do we worship, and from you alone do we seek help. What, the, what, what does this mean? Why we are not saying uh, the, the, the first per person singular, I worship and from you alone I seek help. Instead we say, we use the plural, we. Here there is a macrocosm di dimension and also microcosm dimension and also at the, at the congreg congregation of, of, of believers. Here, you know, when we say we, some Muslim scholars, special, especially some uh, uh, Sufi-oriented scholars, they say, when we use we, we say with my atoms, with my body, with my organs, with my, my Muslim in my, in, my, in, my, in my region, in my city, in my country, on the surface of the earth, then with the Muslims around the Kaaba, then with all creation, that with all universe. So in the V, in, the, in one word, there is physics and metaphysics and everything. But 
We just have to think about that. This is why Imam Ghazali from uh, 12th century says, the Quran is an ocean without shore. So we have to be careful when we are reading Quran and the Quranic vocabulary. You see? So let me just remind you, before Quran revealed to the Prophet Muhammad in Mecca, the Arabs of that time, they regarded nature as lifeless, meaningless, and purposeless. Just nature is something over there. No meaning, no importance, no worth. The Quran from the first day declared at the top of Mount Nur, Jebel Nur, that the heavens and the earth and all we being created with a purpose and meaning. Therefore, again and again, Quran reminds us, repeats this fact, everything has been created with a specific order, duty, meaning and purpose. And here, my dear brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, we have to stop and think if the order, the, 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 the beauty, is in nature is created by Allah. We have to take care of this order. We have to take moral lessons to also base our life, give our, our life a meaning, an order, and a purpose. Universe and nature are not out there by accident as a result of the process of blind and random evolution or chaotic configurations without meaning or purpose, the universe has an order, meaning, and purpose. Therefore, if human ponders and scrutinizes the very structure of natural phenomena, physical universe, he can deduce the existence of a creator who is all-powerful, all-knowing, and all-merciful. Then he can ask questions, what is my place? in this picture. Then, Quran says, Allah says in the Quran, we will show them all signs in the horizons and within themselves until it becomes clear to them that it is the truth. You see, this is why at the beginning of my talk I said, we believe in God, but we believe with the proof in horizons and also proof in within us. So again and again, Quran forces us to think, to make connections with ourselves, with the horizons and with the creator. Things at this stage are ciphers or cryptograms. The whole universe is represented as a big book written entirely in cryptograms. The world is a book, is a big book of symbols, a book which only those who live at the level of existence are able to read. This is why the first verse, the first wahi was to, or below the Prophet ﷺ was to read. This is, this would exactly correspond to the Quranic thought, according to which all things are in truth, ayat, of Allah, signs of Allah. Everything is a sign. The Quranic verses, and that's what, there are ayat, and also the ayats in the creation, the book of creation. They, their symbolic nature can only grasp, only grasp by those who have aql, intellect, who can think, who can make tafakkur in the true sense of the, the word. So, the Quran is generously sprinkled with references to thought and learning, reflection and reason. This is why this gave birth to the Islamic tradition or scientific tradition. This gave, gave, gave birth to the Islamic civilization. It denounces those who do not use their critical faculties in, in the strongest terms. The worst creatures in God's eyes are those who are willfully deaf and dumb. It means who do not reason, who
who do not use the reason given them by Allah, the reason which differentiate us from the rest of the creation. The Quran even directs the Holy Prophet to seek more and more knowledge and say, say, Quran says, say, oh my Lord, increase my, me in knowledge. Rabbi, zitna ilman wa fahman wa alhaqna bi salihin. What a strong statement. The Prophet, Allah says to the Prophet, pray to me and say, increase my knowledge. So it is up to us to burn for learning. Okay? And the Quran emphasizes on the development of reason is reflecting in its use of active verbs such as they are thinking, they are meditating, they are contemplating, etc. There are also other expressions supporting the use of rationality such as ulul elbab, people who possess deep thought, ulul absar, people who possess deep sight, ulul nuha, people who possess visionary thought. So, here, uh, uh, Abdul Ghazi Nablusi from 18th century, uh, from Damascus, he summarizes the gist of the Quranic Waltunshan, word to you. Ta'ammal sutur al kainati fa innaha min al malayl a'la ilayka rasayna. Here is physics and here is the metaphysics. Ta'ammal sutur al kainat. Reflect upon the lines of the book of the universe. Why? For they are letters to you from the highest realm, from Malayil A'la. Thus, the book of creation displays orderliness as clearly as the midday sun exhibits the powers, powers miracle in every word or letter. You know, you know this museum, this Lur Museum, currently largest museum in the world. The museum totals, uh, totals up 380,000 80, pieces of artwork, a record of more than 10 million people. They visit this museum. And you see British Museum in London. It is 5.9 5. 5. and Lourdes Museum is now it's 10.2. So I also visited both museums. But you know why we have these museums? What the most precious piece in this museum is the Mona Lisa. Let's think about the philosophy of art. All this is not only people that are going there to see Mona Lisa, but when visiting Mona Lisa, people try to understand the wisdom, the creativity, the greatness of the artist. They easily connected to Da Vinci, although Da Vinci is not there. So just use this, you know, and again, what we can understand this great poet from 18th century is doing. Reflect upon the lines of the book of the universe as people reflecting on the on the on Mona Lisa and to have an idea about the greatness of the artist. So we have to contemplate, we have to reflect upon the book of universe, then connect ourselves with the creator, with the maker. So we come to the first verse in the Quran. Read in the name of your Lord and the sustainer who created, created man out of a germ cell. You see here, Iqra bismi rabbika lazi khalaq. Read, for your Lord is the most bountiful one who is taught the use of the pen, taught man what he did not know. Moral change, change comes from the, an attention to the world. You see, there it just, Quran, Quran changed the attention of the prophet. He says, look at creation. Look at the universe. Read the universe, read everything. Because when this verse came to the prophet, prophet was an illiterate man. And there was nothing to read because Quran still wasn't uh, written. So it is not maybe he can uh, recite from, uh, from the heart or read from the heart, 
But when we look at the, in, 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 in the wider context, it is, it is recommending, it is teaching Prophet and in the, person, in, the, in, in, the, in the person of the Prophet to all of us to look at the creation, just always connecting creation with the creator. This is the connection. And with these connections, with this attention to the creation comes a moral obligation. Moral obligation in society, moral obligations to the rest of the universe. So, we need to start questions soon, Professor. Yes. Here, you know, reading, reading here it means a completely new way of looking at the world. There is no doubt about it. So, we, we, uh, we got it from the, after the translation of Greek text uh, into Arabic, but in the Quran, the Quran used the kelm, it means, because it, it comes from the word kun, be, and fayakun, and rarely when he intends a thing, his, his command is be, and it is. There is, you know, the very word kun and fayakun indicates the presence of metaphysics indicates the, 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 the creator, the maker of the world. And his creation is not dependent on time or instruments or means or any condition whatsoever. Existence waits on his will or plan or intention. The moment he wills to a thing, it becomes his word or command. And the, the thing uh, forthwith, forthwith comes into existence. So, then nature has a special meaning for Muslims. It is not merely an object perceived by the sun, senses, but also a bridge to divine beauty. Thus nature encompasses both the perceived object by the senses, by reason, and also by heart. Therefore, for a Muslim, nature is an external sign of God. He is sign in the horizons through which one can drive guidance for life and behavior besides the internal discovery of God within himself. You know, here we just Quran teaching us to have to, 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 to change our habits in the in the Meccan period. For 13, 13 years, Quran emphasized the order, the beauty, the greatness of nature always connecting with Allah. If the metaphysics is the study of what it all means, the, uh, the, uh, it has consequences for us. Islamic worldview asks us to change ourselves. To of new behavior in coordination with our beliefs. When dealing with environment, we have to decide upon the whole to set up on how we, were, uh, we would define our own good, true and beautiful on the basis of the Quranic values. We have to translate these values with our actions, as it was in the case of the Prophet Muhammad. You know, this is why God loves not the Westerners. You see, when Quran presents the order, the beauty of the nature, he says, as this is created by Allah, Allah loves not wasters. This verse is changing. Is it is it is or uh, it is uh, you know bringing norms about our consumption patterns. We cannot con consume as a capitalist or as uh, as a secular people consumes. We Muslims with the Quranic worldview, we have to take care of every single thing and not be wasters. You know, just let me finish with the, uh, some concrete things from the life of the Prophet, because the Prophet is a role model for Muslim environmentalists. The Muslims regard the Prophet Muhammad as the perfect man and the complete person, Insani Kami. Aisha, the wife of uh, the, the Prophet's wife, radiallahu anha, describes him as having the character that mirrors the Quran. 
when asked the, the, the later young general asked him about him, he says, do you not read the Quran? He was a living Quran. The Quran addressing to the prophet declares, indeed, you have been endowed with a noble character. Again, he, then he reminds us in the messenger of Allah, you have a beautiful pattern of conduct. So what about the environment? What he says about environment? What, what lessons we can learn from him about environment? First, he's a mercy for all creation. As there is verse, we have not sent you, O Muhammad, except as a mercy to the world. This is why torture and abuse of animals prohibited by the Prophet. They should not be ill-treated, but should be well looked, at, looked after. Kept clean and employed in work suitable to their na natures. Should not be loaded with burdens greater than they can be. Bear. Uh, he put a ban on haunting, forbidding the arbitrary haunting of animals and for pleasure. All this is just established in, in the daytime of the, the Prophet. Even as late as 19th century, the French statement and a man of literature and traveler, Lamartine, visited Istanbul from Istanbul and went to uh, pilgrimage to Quds Sharif, to Jerusalem. In his book, eight volumes on the history of Turks, he says, Muslims have good relations with all creatures, animate and inanimate, trees, birds, dogs, in short, they respect all things God has created. This is, you see, I said, with the read, recite in the name of the Creator, just the first verse of the Quran connects us, connects creation with the Creator. You see? This is shaped whole Muslim perception of the uh, universe and also environment. They extend their compassion and kindness to all the species of the of breast animals, which in our countries, in the Europe, are abandoned or ill-treated in the 19th century. So in all the streets or at specific intervals, they leave bowls of, of water for dogs and, uh, and cats, no? Uh, of the district. Still, this you can see this in Istanbul. But let me give you an example from UK. From, from you all know Edward William Lane. He also from 19th century, British Orientalist, translator and lexicographer. His diction is still is unique from Arabic to, to, into English. He stayed in, he visited, he visited uh, Cairo and he, uh, he stayed there for more than 10 years. And he dressed like an Ottoman bay gentleman. Why? Because dogs often bat at persons in front dresses. Why? Because dogs, Muslims in Egypt, they as much as pleased at observing their humanity to dumb animals, Lane says, to see a person who gathered together the folds of his uh, loose clothes to prevent their coming in contact with a dog, throw to, uh, to, to the, to the infer animal a portion of the bread which he was eating. Then, as Muslims taking care of dogs on the street in, 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 in Cairo, dogs know Muslims, differentiate Muslims and uh, Christians of Cairo. This is why I quote from the, the book of, uh, you know, uh, Lane. Conclusion, Muslims' perception of environment and sustainability has been shaped by the Islamic metaphysics. Allah created the universe and adorns the skies with the sun, the moon, the stars, and the face of the earth with flowers, trees, gardens, orchards, and various animal species. Everything is interdependent with everything else. Humans should or must consider this interconnectedness created by Allah when dealing and interacting with natural phenomena, natural environment. We are not owners and masters of the natural environment. Yes, we are trustees, we are Khalifa of the, uh, on earth, but we are responsible for the creation. We have to care for creation for the sake of the creator. I just, you know, 
let me say, we cannot change the laws of nature, but we can change our broke economy, conception patterns, and unsustainable lifestyle by changing ourselves, our perception, especially we as Muslims, we have to understand the Quranic worldly, the Quranic values towards universe again, and also to take our responsibilities. As Shakespeare once said, to be or not to be, that's, that is the question. If he would see these troubled times of ours in the pandemic era, he may suggest to us to change or not to change. That is the question. You put mask on your face or not, you will prevent your life and also lives of a beloved one or others. So it is a small thing to change or not to change. It is a decision we have to make it. Our leaders, scholars, scientists, as well as NGOs need critical action to address urgent, pending, and increasing environmental degradation. Here, I recommend three books. One is the first by Harvard Press, Islam and Ecology. The second book is my book, and the ethical dimension of human attitude towards nature. And the third is one is from my colleague, many of uh, you is familiar, it is the pioneer of Islamic eco, uh, uh, environmental activism, Fazdun Khalid, The Science on the Earth. Thank you very much. And uh, I, I, I am ready to answer your questions. Thank you so much, Professor. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, we will be sending those slides out to people. If you leave your email address uh, on the chat, um, we'll send those slides out. Now, we're going to be opening up for questions. And um, if there are any questions, please write them on the chat. If you want to ask directly, put your hands up on the Zoom and I will unmute you. Uh, and uh, we can start. So let me start off with some questions with regard to the metaphysics. Um, I mean, thank you so much for, uh, for the uh, brief presentation. Now, many of us are getting involved in the environment, and rightly so, with Greenpeace, Friends of the Earth, uh, and similar sort of um, NGOs out there. And in the metaphysics worlds, or, or shall I say, in the epistemological world of environmental uh, studies, you have the left, who take everything from a Marxist, Marxist uh, uh, praxis. Uh, so they will see everything from an equalities angle, okay? Uh, and how they, how they divide the rights of humans and rights of animals and living things. And then you have the right, uh, the capitalist, who measure everything by externalities and opportunity cost. Now, where are the Muslims now in terms of articulating a middle ground? Because at the end of the day, Muslim countries need to develop, but they can only do that by going through sustain, some sort of development, either rapid development or some, and even sustainable development is not going to get them anywhere they, they're going to need to, because we still have to face some sort of colonial, neo-colonial neo sort of narrative, South versus the North world. So how do we strike a balance, number one? Number two, in terms of real policy, what does it mean? Do we do carbon, uh, carbon, uh, you know, offshoot carbon printing sort of stuff, or uh, what about what? What does it mean in terms of metaphysical policies? Um, I can list the many, many policies of the left, uh, and then articulate it from uh, a Marxist critique, and I can articulate it from the alt right as well. They can articulate from Adam Smith. Where do we, where do we stand in terms of raw metaphysics and raw articulations? I want to start off with myself, and then I'm going to get the yeah. others. To come yeah. Back. Yes. As a chair, as a moderator, you have right to, to ask first questions. <laughs> but each question is so important; it deserves another lecture. Sure. Because we cannot ignore the impact of colonialism on the psyche of Muslims in many parts of the world. So, in under you know the the the, the, the psychology teaches us you know the impact of this post-colonial. Uh, uh, to, to, to understand our post-colonial uh, psyche. So many Muslim leaders, many Muslim, Muslim activists, they just want to be strong like the West, but just imi imi imitating their economic model or policies. We have to be careful. Then we, we are ignoring the whole metaphysics of the Quran. Quran is not just 
let me remind you, for 13 years in Mecca, there was no Salat, only in the last years after uh, the, the night of Isra, Miraj, Salat is was uh, obligatory to all of us. Hajj, Zakat, and, 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 and all other things they just, we have in the Medina period. But in the Medi Mecca, the Quran again and again emphasized the, the Muslim perception of universe. Oh, professor, Next, you mentioned Hajj, but Hajj is yeah, now. Hajj, a, Hajj, um, also, Hajj also, Hajj, Zakat, sure. and uh, fasting, all they are, they are, they are uh, we have at, in the Medina. But Hajj is a big business, it's pollutionary. You have millions going now, I, and there I are know, no trees in Medina, this Makkah. Is, this is, this is so, my argument, because Muslims, they do not look at this as a metaphysical problem. They do not, they, they, they do not connect themselves with the Creator. Who the beauty in nature around them? But if you got millions not, going to Hajj, how yes, do you they, how do you they, trade off with the billions and millions who want to go to Hajj? So you have the ulama shouting, Hajj is a far, you need to go. Uh, Saudi, they need all the, you know, they they need to accommodate. Hajj is a big business. How do we trade off? Uh, uh, so the capitalists will say, not a problem. We'll have all of this. We'll and we'll just tax people, and and the excess tax revenues will just pay for more trees, right? That's the capitalist model. And the left model will be, no, 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 everyone's equal. Somehow we'll have to find something, but we never see anything. Where is the Islamic position? You know, we, we devised an app for, for Indonesia. I have uh, my, 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 my colleague, uh, Fahruddin uh, Manukya. Yeah. He, yeah, he's, he, we, we, we devised an app for, for Hajj. Hope they can, hope they can prevent uh, you know, to, not to pollute the, 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 the Mecca, the Medina, their environment. But, you know, the Muslim administration, religious, religious authorities, they don't take this seriously. As you said, they just take their money. They don't care much about to train them, to educate them. Because many of our uh, uh, pilgrims, they are lay people. So we have to be patient. This is the gist of environmental in environmentalism is re-educating ourselves about our values, about our par uh, priorities, okay? You see? So it can be reflected in our daily life and also during the Hajj. This is why I am emphasizing and underlining the importance of metaphysics. By metaphysics, I mean, uh, I, I, I'm, try I, I'm meaning the same thing Quran says, Gaib. You see? When we connect also, when we see nature as the book of creation, we cannot destroy this book. But look, when there is somebody disrespects Quran, even as a provocation, all Muslims in, around the world, they say, they protest this as a respect of the Quran. But Muslims themselves, they're destroying the nature. Nobody is protesting or nobody is trying to stop this. Sure, we've got some questions on chat. I, 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 I can't understand this. If there is anything, any, any, any harm is done to animals, to nature, Muslims must stand firm and protest this. Sure. About, about development, we have to ask if the order, the mizan, the balance in nature created by, or created by Allah, it is all responsibility, okay. moral imperative to protect to preserve this uh, balance, this, this order in the name of sustainability. This is the very term sustainability is a new term. Yeah. They coined it because the capitalist system is unsustainable. Yeah, but, but it's inherent to growth. Mm -hmm. they're, they're trying to, to initiate a, a un, uh, a unsustainable capitalist system. You can still develop. This is why I emphasize, you know, they have to use all reason. We have to, we, the, 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 no, we, even the prophet says, Rabbi zidna ilman. Oh my Allah, increase my knowledge. We cannot be ignorant. We have to be knowledgeable about the workings of the universe and workings of the nature and also how to translate this into uh, social life. So, this is not an easy job.
Sure, we've got some questions, hands raised up. Um, uh, before we take that, I just want to, and then we've got some chat questions. So just very quickly before I hand it over to yourself, which questions will you want to respond on chat or so? So ethically, ethically, how do you make a conscious decision uh, between, you know, say for example, let's take the Hajj issue or any environmental issue. You know, you need to make it. So in the West, we have local versus uh, uh, sometimes eating something local it's probably more productive than eating something organic. See, so how do you trade off, which is more ethical? How do we make an ethical decision uh, from an Islamic perspective? So at least the West, uh, at least the West have a, a very articulate metaphysics they framed uh, with regards to that. So from the Muslim perspective, how do we, let's even take the Hajj. Uh, is it, could we could we put a ban on local Hajj, local Saudis not doing Hajj to allow for people more international? Or when we do the Qurbani during, uh, can we have more organic Qurbani uh, during the Hajj? Because obviously we're in Dhul Hijjah now, uh, and so this is going to be a challenge. Uh, can we do carbon offsetting? Because all the Hajj is coming over here in the plane loads, they're going to be just you know uh, the hotels have to be built right at the end of the day. This hotels has to cater for two to three million people. Trees have to be destroyed. Uh, uh, even though we're not supposed to be, uh, it's a haram, the harim, the harim zone and the haram, we're not supposed to be destroying the trees, but trees have to be built, yes. right? Trees, I mean, trees yeah. have to be uprooted and the hotels have to be uh, built to cater for the millions of people. So ethically, how do we find a balance? And this is the whole issue, you see. At least if I go to the left, at least if I go to the right, they will say it's about money, we tax them, and we clean it up, okay? But they've destroyed it, but they'll just compensate it by, we'll clean it up later on once we've taxed people. With the left, no, 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 we'll do lots of demonstrations, but they have no solutions. What do we, what is our trade-off? What is, what is the, uh, how do we decide our ethical positions? That's what I'm trying to say. And then I'll hand it over to yourself. In fact, you, you, what you say is a good example uh, of my approach. If we emphasize, if we teach people the value of universe, the value of nature, and it is connection with the with the with the creator, with Allah, many of them they will think like you. They will question everything related to uh, the, the the development plan of the city, new parks, and also uh, the buildings of hotels, whatever. They will ask if it is in balance with the with, with the with the holy lands or not. I can I can provide you many many good example examples from the history of uh, history of Muslim civilization. Mm. Oh, they are respectful about about the natural resources in the Haram and also in other places. Of course, but they had endowments. They, they had it, yes, right? Yes, but but the impact of impact of environment in modernity on us is immense. We cannot ignore that. Even Edward Lane, when visited uh, Egypt for the second time. Or second time, he says, man of, he just observed the, the Muslims' um, relation with the animals and with the nature has been changing. Sure. Then he says, oh my God, this is because of the impact of Europeans on the Muslims. They are also trying to be like us. So it is a matter of education. It's a matter of perception. And it is not an easy question. But fortunately, nowadays, many young Muslims, they begun to study environment, mm -hmm. you know, environmental, uh, they, are, they, they are doing environmental thesis, master thesis, doctoral thesis, you know, PhDs, but uh, by the time we will have more options for us. Sure. This is not only a question I can answer as a philosopher, you know, mm -hmm. a, I have to talk, we have to, we have to approach the problem with a holistic approach. Sure. You know, with engineers, with uh, architects, with city planners, right. with scientists, with scholars, with so so sociologists and psychologists. So they this need is, to be trained. They also need to be trained and educated. Why, Nisa, I, yeah. I said the prophet is talking about the right of the wind. Right. If the prophet is talking and reminding his, his colleagues about the, the, the right of his neighbor's wind, not to prevent the wind, so it is up to us to come up with new creative solutions. Come on. We've got a question from Professor Fakhruddin from Indonesia. I'm just going to unmute him now. 
Professor, be prepared oh. for to be on mute. Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum, Professor. Um, Assalamu alaikum, Professor. Uh, greeting from Indonesia. This is nine o'clock uh, in the evening. Uh, I'm very happy to see you with the lecture alaykum salam. tonight. I was in Jakarta the other day, but I couldn't see you there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it is imperative to, to us, to the Muslim world as well. Um, we are educate people, educate our future generations. And um, your lecture today uh, in my commentary is enlightening of, you know, the emphasis of the uh, metaphysical, which is, you know, absent uh, in several centuries, perhaps. Yeah. Um, can you, if you, if you can repeat again the importance of metaphysical, because this uh, in the secular world, this is uh, something uh, not connecting to the philosophical and also ontological uh, world that in the secularized world. Uh, we see so many ethical books such as, you know, this ethics, this ethic, environmental, but we, we cannot find any um, metaphysical dimensions on that. So mm -hmm. we need some writing on that as well, um, as well enlightenment from, from you, uh, including to, to fulfill the, um, the emptiness of this mythical, mythical, metaphysical uh, aspect. That's one aspect. The second, I would like to ask your, your opinion about um, Islamic um, Islamic science, as you know, maybe um, from Professor Hussein Nasser, he is well, uh, he's one of the um, founder of the Islamic science aspects and putting that Quranic uh, dimension for the Islamic science um, as well. And we have also the discourses on the, the Islamization of knowledge on this dimension. So what, what, what kind of this uh, metaphysical uh, dimension can be influenced of this kind of field of uh, science and scientific knowledge? Bahreddin, thank you very much. May I ask you, you know, I just mentioned Bahreddin's uh, name, in, you know? Uh, he can he can give us he, about his project about Hajj and environment and ecology, <laughs> Nizam. Yes, we have. He's we the had person a who just is. Uh, we had a wonderful a very, session. Very, very, Bahreddin is a very well known Muslim activist. He's be proud of him in in everywhere. You know, I am a little bit with the philosophical metaphysical dimension, but he's or ha, ha, right hand in in activism like uh, like uh, Fazlun Khalid. CD Fazlun Khalid, you know, sure. and he he's done a great job to educate, to train uh, Indonesian uh, well, to, mm. to to make less carbon print uh, on, 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 on on during the Hajj. Sure. Then I will answer your questions, Farhat. Uh, uh, yeah, this is on the on the process of you know it. Uh, again, this is uh, need a, a time to disseminate uh, because not everyone uh, concerned about this um, dimension of ethics. Uh, as you know, we, we could understand that we uh, all the plants should absorb their carbon. Uh, because of that, they um, the causes of the climate change because the you know burden of the emission and by now we should regret that all the plan have to to be stopped <laughs> because of that covid 19 i think is it is also a reflection of why so many airplane was not really really concerned to the environmental aspect uh, we've been remind 
we cannot we cannot do uh, you know polluting the the air and destroying the nature because the nature at least uh, helping us in you know business uh, business environment and good weather but what happened if, if nature you know fire firing back to us like now you know you can you can imagine like billions of dollars been stopped you know and many airplanes cannot fly because the nature was you know fire back to human being it's only from the small creature the COVID 19 and i've been also in my activism to remind people not trading the the wildlife because this is the the the, the source of the matter of the uh, virus and the zoonotic diseases so we have project on that or and remind uh, muslim and uh, remind or uh, not only the muslim because muslim have a good, good tradition not consume the animal causes of this uh, uh, virus spread and could make a stress of the animal that can be spread of um, diseases to the human so this uh, emerging human diseases uh, coming from the um, common behavior misbehavior of the human as well so regarding the green hearts uh, we, you can you can open your apps there's a green green hearts application there there's a, some guidelines suggestion you can access it in the world what you should do for example if you are going for hajj you need to plan about 40 trees if you're coming from jakarta to saudi arabia 40 trees at least to absorb your carbon so uh, you buy that you can uh, be a carbon neutral and or you can invest that for the you know either that to sun train to plant the trees to islamic boarding school or the school to plant the trees or to convert that um you know the cost for renewable energy for example so it, it, it can be balancing the, uh, the carbon footprint for you um, in the short time. We have to change. As Professor Ozemir says, the, or not, if we are going to be uh, have a, a business as usual after this COVID, this can be a matter again. Okay. So just to follow on to environmental problem. just following on, we've got some comments and questions coming through. Essentially, I mean, one particular one, uh, yeah. Sammy Bryant, speaking as a Muslim activist, I think Sammy Bryant's in the UK, the criticism I've come across is the fact that Muslims and religious people in general give too much focus to the akhirah, to meaningful engagement with material, material environmental issues. Whilst I think this is unfair to Islam and Islamic tradition, as the professor outlined, in terms of dealing with fellow Muslims, I think it's a legitimate criticism. To me, this is where the leftist traditions have a strength, given their focus on material conditions. I wonder if Professor uh, Ozdima can comment on this. What are, the, what are your thoughts on connecting the metaphysical to the activism for material change? And I think there's a lot of truth in what you're saying. Uh, in, in truth in what uh, Sammy Bryant is saying how do we what are your thoughts on connecting the metaphysical to the act to activism for material change going back to the uh, Hajj issue uh, or even where you are uh, Professor Fakhruddin it's development uh, when you have more development sustainable or not you're going to have economic growth it means people want more things so even for yourself Jakarta is trying to move to another place because it's unsustainable people as yeah. they develop they want more Hajj there has to be a trade-off, but so we have to talk about material, you know, at what level do we have material change? And this is something the left very spell it out, whereas it seems to be must, and, and I think from this uh, comment here, where do we, where do we, what are your thoughts in connecting metaphysical to activism for material change? Uh, the left have made it very, very clear where they stand, uh, and 
and hats out to them, whereas the Muslims need to articulate that. Any thoughts on that, Professor? Yes, thank you very much. Let me just uh, summarize. Thank you, Professor. Maybe, maybe this can be an answer to many questions. Islam is not a new religion like a new age, age movement or new spirituality. Islam is a religion with a history. Just have a flight from Taj Mahal to Andalusian Gardens. Okay? When you are going from India, from Taj Mahal to Andalus, to Cordoba, to Cordoba just visit Isfahan, Shiraz, Damascus, Cairo, Istanbul, Konya, and uh, uh, Karawiyin in Tunis and also Marrakesh. You will see how Islamic values, how Quranic metaphysics sh shaped the, the, the civilizations. Gardens, uh, streets, cities, all is eco-friendly. You see? This is, uh, even you, you visit Istanbul, just look at the old houses very, very carefully. That is, when they built houses for themselves, they also have a small houses for the birds because they say they, they, they say this is also created by Allah. But yes, I agree with you with the impact of colonization and also uh, political and social problems in 19th century, 20th, early 20th, half to 20th century. Still, there are many political and so, uh, social problems in the Muslim world. So, but do you think we can go back to a pre Cartesian world? because it fundamentally is about post-Cartesian, right? We can, we can learn from our past in, and with a critical mind. I am not saying we have to go to the past. This is all reality. It is a rich, it's a legacy for us. Whole French government, even the West, is taking care of the Mona Lisa. Why we are not taking care of our legacy, Islamic civilizations, and learning from it and coming with the new solutions? This is why I, I am saying what uh, Paratin says, Islamization knowledge. Last week, uh, Osman Bakar, Professor Osman Bakar made an excellent speech here. He talked mm. about this issue. Uh, but uh, I also commented that, you know, we have to deal with, uh, the, 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 we have to rethink about the debates of Islamization knowledge after more than uh, 50 years past, you know. We have, again, just look at the problem with the, a wider context. What, this is why I said the Quranic word for you. First, they have to, to the, sometimes they say maqasud sharia or maqasud uh, yeah, the, the goals of, of, of the Islam, the, 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 the goals of Islam. We can approach the matter from different perspectives. What is, what is I'm trying to say? Hmm. We, we, we have to be active, we have to be creative and critical. Critical in the sense, sense to understand the past and not stay there. That's fine. But some people say, there's a comment saying, how, if, if you're talking about the maqasid, so one of the maqasids could be environment. So yeah. we have, but also one of the maqasids is also progeny. It's also about how, uh, family, right? It's about stability of thinking. Now the Muslim community is about, what, 2 billion or 1.5 billion, whatever it is. So we have to strike a balance, a trade-off. Ethically, where do we stand between a growing population with needs and a population? We have ulama going, produce more children, produce more children. But hang on, the earth is not sustainable. Ethically, where do we stand? The left have made it quite clear this is, they're, they're not going to have this. The right are saying, don't worry, we'll probably go to Jupiter, exploit some of the new world out there, etc., <laughs> etc. Where do we stand? And this is a valid, uh, another comment saying that as well. My comment, this is why I am, say, I am saying uh, very often using the critical, uh, uh, with the critical mind. Mm. You see, I am teaching at Iskida University uh, on. A course, uh, on critical thinking. This is the first course I think in Turkey. We Muslims, we have to also rekindle the spirit of critical thinking in our traditions. And some of them might maybe say this, so many of them, I just attended a meeting of Ulama's Day. Nobody care about the environment and about the rights of the future generations. One of the maqasid sharia is to care about all siblings. What kind of the world all grandchildren will have in 2050 and 2060? Nobody's thinking about that. And we are just trying to save the day. Yeah. I am not talking about politicians because I know politicians' horizon is limited with the next election. Right. And I understand that. 
But people like us, we have to think about our children, about grandchildren, mm -hmm. 50 years later, 60 years in advance. This is a, 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 one of pillars of Maqasid Sharia. But the ulama is not talking about that. This mm -hmm. is why I encourage them to engage at a critical dialogue with them, not, uh, you know, a destroying or, or we have to understand each other. We have to understand each other. We have to, uh, so we have to find solutions to our problems with the spirit of dialogue. That's it. We've got a question from Mohammed Hassan uh, Basri. I'm just going to unmute him for a second. Yes. Bismillah. Yalla. Thank you so much, uh, Ostimer. Uh, I am Mohammed Hassan Basri from Indonesia, but actually uh, uh, right now uh, I'm studying in PhD in Western Sydney University. Uh, 12, year, 12 years ago, I met you in my uh, center in the Jakarta Center for Religious and Cultural Studies. Uh, maybe you remember uh, Zainal Bagir. Yes. He is my, yeah, he is my uh, supervisor. And today I'm, I'm really, really happy because uh, uh, meeting you in, in this uh, Zoom. My question is about, uh, um, the first is related to my uh, study here. Uh, I'm uh, conducting research on um, uh, green pesantren following Fahreddin uh, Jaya. Um, the first question is about the uh, thesis of uh, Anna M. Gade. I think you know the, the, the new, new book from, from her. Uh, um, Muslim environmentalism, uh, change of uh, Islamic uh, um, uh, uh, in, in environmental humanities. He talked about the uh, ethics uh, of Islam in, in environmental studies. What do you think about the uh, uh, um, Islamic concept in uh, environmentalism? Uh, in general, I mean, because uh, today we, we, we try to connect, as you mentioned, about the Islamic concept to uh, what Gade said about the European uh, uh, dominant in our knowledge right now. And the second is about the how do you look at the Indonesian chance uh, about the um, uh, Psantren, because uh, Psantren is very, very uh, influencing also in Indonesia. But uh, I think um, the, the, the lack of uh, our chant is impractical. In, in concept, I think it's, it's, uh, uh, um, we, we have much uh, in Quranic and also in Hadith about, about the in environmental ethic. But in practical, we have uh, many uh, uh, challenges in Indonesia also, I think, in, in, in Turkey. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. It is uh, good to hear you after so many years. And I'm also surprised when I was visiting Cape Town a few years ago, uh, one, of students, uh, one of my students came up with a PhD in her hand, and she's uh, and in, in environmental studies. And this is just, I said, it is my Nobel Prize for any scholars, you know. And you know, yeah, first, you know, environmental, Islamic environmental ethics, environmental uh, uh, sustainable development, climate change, we are all, wor all, all, all working on that. Now with Fazlun Khalid and with a core team, and uh, uh, Fahreddin is also there, we are working on a, uh, uh, the uh, uh, char Islamic Charter for Environment. With the, and this is UNEP is asked us is co cooperating with us to have a document because we don't still have a charter for environment as Muslims we have a charter for climate change but not for environment so we have to do a lot of things and uh, this is I think there's a, a lot of things is going on many students like you are doing uh, working on the field and this is in a matter of time. But I am optimistic about the future. Future. So the other thing, Indonesia, as a, one of the biggest, as the biggest Muslim country, have a lot of lessons to learn, and also from Indonesia, from 
especially from uh, environmentalist activists like Fakhrettin and his, his, his team, but also they can learn from other parts of the world. This is why we are very often visiting different countries, we are meeting with different friends and learning from them, sharing all uh, experiences with them. This we is call- because, as you remember, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we, we are on the same boat. If, the, if somebody make a hole at the bottom of the ship or, or the boat, we are all will perish. So we cannot, we cannot keep quiet, we cannot be silent, we cannot be inactive. This is the spirit of Muslim environmentalism. We have to be active. We have to be in dialogue with each other and also with the uh, uh, other environmentalists. I've got an excellent question just come through. Zinara Sheikh. The demand for meat and the resulting animal agriculture is one of the leading causes of global warming, rainforest depletion and habitat destruction, besides factory farming being extremely abusive to the animals themselves. The UN FAO has also pointed out the prevalent use of antibiotics, raised for food as leading to the antimicrobial resistance, emergence of superbugs, uh, worse than COVID, etc. Is it unsustainable to grow animals in a halal way to meet the demand. As a Muslim community, we love our meat, okay? Qurbani and lots of other things. How should we respond to this? Should we adopt a vegan diet, uh, which are shown to be more environmentally friendly? We know from the, we know from the tradition, the Prophet ﷺ was very balanced. Uh, pre-modern societies ate very little meat, but modern Muslims, you know, as they develop and grow, we love meat. Every, every you, yeah, I mean, you're from Turkey, right? We, you can't live without the kebabs, right? So what do we do? Do we, could we, how do we, again, trade off between maybe this alternative vegetarian soya slash, um, you know, plant-based meat products versus real meat? Because on the one hand, if you're going to have more cows and camels and sheep, it's going to create, you know, destruction. On the other hand, you know, which the West uh, are also finding that if, if you're going to have plantation stuff, someone has to grow soya and someone has to, you know, destroy more trees. So how do we resolve this? Where do we stand? You know, the, one of the major uh, concepts of the Quran is the concept of justice. Adalah. It is mizam. It is balance. So if we understand this, we can solve then we cannot be victimized by the conception culture of Islam. Islam we find many vegetarian people. For example, Rabia al Adaviya, many, many people, they don't know she was a vegetarian. There is a lot of people like this, you know, they, 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 they choose a vegetarian life. But even, even we consume meat, it is halal for us, but all, all relations, all pattern is based on very strict rules. Even we are making uh, qurbani, we have to observe certain rules. We cannot, we cannot, you know, uh, slaughter or kurbani as we wish. But is it there ethical is to get a fatwa to say you can't eat more than meat Islamic every day, for example? Islamic, Islamic uh, judiciary is just, just interwin to each other. You know? This is why Islamic law is dead. Maybe have another talk on this, on animal rights, especially sure. about all interaction with animals. I can, I can present you many examples. Sure. There are but, some good examples. There are some bad examples also. But would it be uh, ethical and morally right to have a fatwa saying Muslims, because of the demand, because of the global warming, reduce your meat consumption, uh, here's a fatwa. Like we've done, Fakhruddin and his team have done a fatwa with the Majlis al-Ulama on the rainforest. Could we do the same thing? Would it be uh, ethically yeah, sure. possible? Is it right? But unfortunately, all ulama still is not aware of the, uh, the, 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 the impact of global uh, uh, climate change and also environmental problems. We should have to educate them about that. Because Pope uh, Francis uh, issued five years ago uh, La C document. It is 192 pages. Mm-hmm. But as I as as I know from his advisors, one of his advisors told me 
more than 200 scholars and scientists, they helped him to, to, to produce this document. But we Muslims, we, we, we still lack such a doc documents. All ulama is, you see, with this document, the Pope made an immense impact in the world. So we can't just, you know, we are, when we are caring about it, or, 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 or this is why we are working on or, or ch ch charter on Islamic charter of, of environment. Then maybe we can motivate ulema. Right. When they have a ruling, they have a beta, of course, it will be a great impact on, on, on Muslims, especially lay Muslims. We have a good example. For example, in 13th century, the chief, chief mufti of, of, of Cairo, Ibn Abdul Salam, he issued a fatwa about the human animal relations. It's excellent. Excellent. Sure. So, we, okay, so we've got another question. Kudris uh, Mirza. There is scientific evidence that indicates there is a certain randomness in the creation of the universe. How do you reconcile the scientific evidence with the Islamic metaphysical concept of, concept of ordered and considered createdness? And that's an interesting uh, concept here because, again, um, both secular uh, apparatus, whether it's left or right, would concur with the scientific evidence as opposed to the metaphysical concept of ordered and considered creativeness. How do we reconcile the two? You know, there is also a question it is, uh, on the chat. It is asking about uh, Richard Dawkins. Yes. Dawkins. And, yeah. You know, this, this is very, you know, provocative uh, uh, man. And even there is a very recent book, very critical about his and how he's uh, exploiting this issue. I can, we can talk uh, a separate talk, uh, I can give a separate lecture on Richard Dawkins and his argument. Okay. And again, about the relation of reason and revelation, science and religion, it is a different issue. Right. I, I give a lecture on this in, in uh, uh, Florida State University to the, a secular scientist. You know, yeah. what is the place of reason and revelation? What is the relation of science and religion? But it, it, it is, it, it, if I give a short answer, it will be, I will do injustice to the issue. It is very important. But let me say this, the problem of science and religion, reason and revelation is totally different in the Western, in the Christianity and in the Islam. But when we are reading books, for example, I, I recently I read uh, 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 an, art, uh, an article uh, about the Bertrand Russell daughter. She said, my, my father was always trying to find God, to believe in God, but he couldn't do, to do it because of the clergy, because of institutionalized Christianity. You know, people, you can have problems with the institutionalized uh, Muslim uh, uh, really, uh, Islam in Turkey, in Saudi Arabia, in Egypt, but this is a different issue, you see. But when we look at in, in, in the civilizational level, the problem of a reason and revelation, science and religion is totally different from the West. This is the first. Then we can talk uh, the other details separately because many times they just when they read something about uh, Richard Dawkins, that's problem with Christianity, not with Islam. Absolutely. Let me just remind you uh, the, 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 the famous atheist, Anthony, the Professor Anthony Flew, who passed away uh, in, to, in 2009. He just before he, 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 he passed away, he made a press conference in New York City, in, I think in, in Columbia University. He said, no, I am wrong. I believe in God. But I believe in God in our Aristotelian sense. Right. But why? Because the recent, recent scientific data on DNA and other, uh, especially on the, on the eye and other things, convinced me there must be a designer, there must be a God. Sure. We got a question the, from... The, the, the evolutionary theory just... Has, uh, yes? We have a question from Abbas Sufyan from cannot... Malaysia. Yes. Yes, Abbas. Abbas. Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. Uh, thank you very much, Prof. Uh, Professor Ibrahim Ozdemir. I have read um, many of your book and your article, but uh, up till now I didn't get the book <laughs> because very expensive in, 
in market. <laughs> but uh, actually, I have, I, am, I, am also, I am also buying from the market. They didn't give. You... <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. The question is the problem. Same uh, with the problem which is rejected. I think uh, what I read in Islamic and Ecology, there is one article which is rejected because of one writer from Bangladesh. He is writing about uh, the culture of people in Bangladesh which have a ceremony in river. But uh, all the, the author is rejecting because this is the the big sin in Islam called shirk. Shirk. My problem is I am writing in environmental ethic in uh, mountain cloud. Cloud is the volcanic. Yeah. Uh, five year, yeah, volcanic mountain which is uh, has a big explosion at 2014. 2014. But uh, actually, the people in, in this mountain are contained from uh, many religions, Hindu and Christian and Catholics, uh, and etc. Annually, they have, uh, uh, the, we call uh, Sasrahan, we call Sasajen, this is ceremonial, to give the mountain uh, some food. Some food uh, from the field, from the grass, uh, rice, and etc., given to the mountain every year annually. According to Islamic view, this is kind of shirk. They call the big sin in Islam. This is my problem: how to solve and what is the view in Islam when the people of tradition traditional people by their culture they protect the environment by their culture by their tradition but the problem in uh, Islamic uh, Islamic uh, what Islamic uh, in Quran and Hadith yeah, Quran and Hadith protecting and uh, saying for the trees and giving the food for the trees is something forbidden in Islam. And it is the big sin yeah, in Islam. How to solve this problem? Actually, my, my uh, thesis, my dissertation on uh, Islamic in the, uh, university in Surabaya, one a second big city oh, yeah, I know, in I know. Indonesia. I visited Indonesia twice. Twice, OK. Make it but more, sir. The third time more visiting. <laughs> I have. <laughs> okay, no problem. Okay, thank you for the time. At, uh, if there is um, uh, time for me and giving uh, the time for me for asking and question, thank you, thank you very let, much. Let, let me say that this is very important question in South Asia. I was uh, visiting a scholar in Maldives last August and early uh, uh, September. And I just wa was uh, uh, curious how Islam uh, reached these islands. And it was through a Sheikh Yusuf. When Sheikh Yusuf is from Morocco, but he when he, 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 when he landed on the island, there was no Muslims. But there was a lot of super, uh, superstitions. But with, the, with the, his Quranic teaching, Quranic values, he changed this perception. And all islands, first the king, then all the island convert to Islam. We have to be patient and also creative. And again, I was in Hong Kong in December, uh, the, the, the December uh, 2018. And before going to uh, Hong Kong to give a, to attend that international conference, I just studied how Islam reached the China. Then I discovered some Muslim, Chinese Muslim, they translated Islamic te text in a different way, so the Chinese can understand it. They, 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 they use the terminology which is familiar for Chinese, you see? So this is again, we have to be creative. Yes, we cannot accept this shit, we cannot join them, but we can understand this and we can, uh, we can make it very clear. We have to think about how we can present Islam to these people. For this, they have to understand their culture, their language, and also 
make a good translation of our text. Okay, I've got um, a, a person called Moti Rahman. Uh, can I bring a view Mama, to Abbas's question I, to go my deep? My laptop is running off battery. Let me uh, connect it to the... Sure, sure. I'll just get Moti Rahman, if you don't mind. I'm going to unmute you. So um, if you could unmute yourself. Uh, I've unmuted you. Hopefully you should be there. Thank you, Salam. Yeah. Well, we'll just wait for the professor to come back. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes. Can you hear? Yes. Ah. Fantastic. Bismillah. Motir Rahman. Go ahead. Yalla. Yeah, no, this um, question of Shirk around the giving of uh, some sort of great gratitude to whether it's um, a river or something, or to a mountain. The fact that, you know, there's a Quran, a verse which says, remember all animals are communities like you, like mm. all, all um, that all beings are communities and um, in that sense, to, rather than that it's a point of worshipping, it, it's just that we are showing gratitude to these communities. Can, is this a way of saying that it's not, it's not shirk, sure, it's, it's just that we have a different sense of the living presence of earth, that it's all alive mm -hmm. in a very different way to the idea that the earth is dead, that we are showing our gratitude to these communities. Are you saying it's more like Gaia? Well, like, well, I come from, yeah, from the tradition of like, you know, with the Gaia Foundation and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the earth jurisprudence that mm -hmm. earth is a dead property. The earth is a living property. The earth has life. The soil has billions of microorganisms in it that we now understand through science. It, everything is, is much more alive than we thought microbiomes in our stomach and so on. So mm -hmm. by showing this, we, we are just demonstrating our understanding. Of, of, of that life is at the source and uh, rather than that we are worshipping which is mm -hmm. a different Thank you yeah. Professor do you think uh, a response would be Ibn Arabi's response yeah everything's living within us Perhaps. Not only Ibn Arabi Ibn Arabi Jalalatin Rumi Bayazid Bistami I can give to the Said Nursi Said Nursi wrote a, a treatise on the rights of flies 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 rights of flies so what is, he is in prison, he says, don't, you can't, he protests prison, at, uh, prison administration where they, they use chemicals to get uh, rid of the flies and insects in the prison. In the name of, they say they have rights. He's not defending himself. This is very important. On the Quranic basis, he says, every single creature has a right to, to live. We, we, can't, we can't defend ourselves when they're attacking us, when a snake attacks us, when a lion attacks us, when a wolf attacks us, we can defend ourselves, but we cannot kill them irresponsibly. You see, then uh, in, 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 other, uh, in, in, in some of my talks uh, on animals, you know, I, I, I agree with you, you know, and this is why I said, in the microcosmos and microcosmos, we, Pray you, we all, with all creation, we say we, 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 uh, we uh, pray to you, to Allah. So there is a unity in the creation. Tawhid is manifested in the creation. So we have to, we have to think about that. This is why I just said, you know, uh, this is Quranic verses, you know, why you are not thinking, why you are not making contemplation. We only can solve these problems just thinking on them and talking with each other and coming with new solutions. So your, your, your response would be, uh, re-articulate Tawheed as part of uni unity of uh, creation. Yeah. Uh, and also possibly look at the idea of fitra, uh, the idea of natural disposition uh, 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 as a solution at birth. Uh, because there are many traditional societies, not just in, in Indonesia, but around the world, in Africa, in North America, um, or even... Moti was saying, you know, the whole guy. Any thoughts, any responses, Moti? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so, so from a legal perspective, well, I'm thinking about legal, when you're talking about this balancing of, from an ethical perspective of the mm -hmm. different interests and the trade off, in our legal system, we often just have, uh, uh, you know, the, the sustainable development is still, it's not giving rights to the other beings. It's not saying, let's bring uh, somebody stewarding the right of the flies or the yeah. right of the sea yeah. to this court and having them representing this. So that could be a way in which we could have an environmental ethic 
which is different to where we're representing. And you know, Bruno Latour talks about it from a very Western talk about the parliament of all things. Mm -hmm. So this idea of having a parliament where all beings are represented rather than just the human interest. So we become a community of communities in, our, in the way in which we describe and come to our ethical decisions. So would you say a United Nations of all beings as opposed to human rights? Yeah, it, it, yes. So it's not, it's not, it, it's de, it's maybe uh, leveling out our interests so that we are, see ourselves as part of this creative uh, community, sense of mm -hmm. many communities that we belong with. Fantastic. Anything else, Professor, would you like to comment or add? In fact, Ikhwan Safa, the brethren of purity, they have, in their reside in their treatises, they have such a uh, parliament of animals, they are judging human beings. Yes. No human is cruel to them. Very mm -hmm. fantastic. Uh, this is why I say in all, uh, in, in all legacy, there's a lot of things we have to discover, we have to bring to, 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 to the light, we have to uh, update them and this, uh, share it with others. Fantastic. On that note, I think we've come to the end because we've gone well over time. We'd like to thank all of our professors, in particular Professor Osbrima, for a wonderful session. All the panelists who've um, contributed, Professor Fakhruddin, uh, Abbas, uh, Moti Rahman, any others. I I'm, I'm so sorry that, I mean, we tried to get all the chat questions, we sort of summarised it, but I'm sure there's lots and lots of discussions and thought-provoking uh, ideas that have come out of this. Uh, most important thing, if you send us your email on the chat, if you're not on our mailing list, we'll send you a copy of the uh, okay. of the uh, presentation and also we'll send you a copy. I, I, I will send to you. A, bro a brother asked me about this, some practical yeah. stuff. Yeah, practical the takeaways. First practical, the first practical thing is start with the Bismillah. No. In the name of God. Connecting all stuff with the God, with all creator. Then, then even we are using water for evolution, for, 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 for Vudu. We cannot overuse water. This is our ethics with the water, our connection. When we start with the Bismillah, in the name of Allah, remembering Him, then we cannot even take in abortion, we cannot uh, overconsume water. So, so what? We cannot be victims of over, uh, consumer culture, a victim of capitalism. We are Muslims, we have to use our reason and also our heart with to be sensitive to the amana given us by Allah. Maybe what we, what we could have, Professor, another session with yourself and Professor Fakhruddin and others, uh, a session where we could actually see a policy. Uh, what would a uh, Islamic environmental policy in practice, in written, look like uh, in postmodern societies? If we could... In fact, me and Fakhruddin, we produced one of the documents for the Muslim countries. It's, it's a, a strategy document for 2030 for Muslim, uh, Muslim ministers of environment. It is accepted, in, in, it is accepted in Rabat in last uh, October, uh, uh, September. Mashallah, because, so maybe we could have a, a session on that because people want yeah. to have practical takeaways back to their practical, countries before it. Practical things, yeah. Fantastic. So without further ado, I'd like to thank everyone. Uh, it is being recorded, we'll send it out to you and possibly I'll, I'll lead on both Professor Fakhruddin and Professor Ozdima on this uh, uh, on this policy, what does a policy possible policy recommendation look like? Jazakum uh, khairan. Stay safe, and hope to see you in the next uh, session. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.